Hi, I'm Eric Peterson, and for my ethical interview, I interviewed the head of Park Tool, uh, Mr. Eric Hawkins. So, moving over a little bit about Park Tool. Uh, if you're like me, and you read that first bullet which says Park Tool is a company that makes bike tools, you think, uh, is that just a fancy way of saying they make bike parts? Actually, no, they don't make any bike parts, they only make tools for fixing bikes. Um, Park Tool actually opened their doors in 1963, and 50 years later, they moved to their newest and biggest location that is 80,000 square feet, and now holds up to 60, 60 full-time employees. Uh, I asked Mr. Hawkins about the size of his company and the amount of work you're seeing. He said that the company is a fun size and still uh, involves everyone and everything. So he says that he really enjoys the size of the company that they're at right now. A little bit about Eric. Uh, Eric is the found, is the son of the founder, Mr. Howard Hawkins. Uh, he's happily married to his wife, who said, who he says constantly keeps him grounded in his faith, and reminds him to pray about the business and every decision that he makes here. Um, he just compliments her a lot about how much of a rock that she is for him. Um, he's now been at the head of the company for 25 years, uh, and he looks over more of the company as a whole. He is not always in the warehouse but he's always looking over everything, doing a little bit of everything. So just some of the questions that I asked, um, I just kind of asked him some fundamentals, like years of leadership, number of employees, number of locations. Then I also went on to ask him uh, where he thinks he gets his morals from, um, then where are some things that he tolerates or does not tolerate from his employees, how do you enforce your morals or your ethics in your daily decisions, what are some ethical views you bring into work with you every day, um, have you ever let somebody go to an ethical issue? Um, what do you think about suing from a Christian moral standpoint? And then finally, um, are there any like ethical decisions that he's made that kind of go against social norm, but for him, deep down, he knew it was the right thing to do? Uh, and I really enjoyed doing this interview. I got some really good answers from Eric that I'll share with you now. So, we just kind of went over some of the fundamental questions, like 25 years in leadership, 60 full-time employees, this is their fourth location. Um, and I'm looking at the second question, which was uh, where he gets his morals from. He says he gets his morals from his father, his faith, and other businesses. He says that his father did a really good job um, of just raising him right. He says, you know, you work hard, you treat people fair, and they're going to come back to you. They're going to trust you. Uh, he says his faith. Um, he says his faith in the Lord is huge and how he runs his business and how he treats people. And he also talked about how other businesses have shaped how he makes these, some of these decisions for his business and the fact that um, he sees what companies do well, he sees what other companies don't do well, and he tries to take those, and he tries to expand on them to help his company flourish. Um, then I asked him, what are some things that he tolerates? Uh, he says he has strict, strict expectations, but there's also a little bit of flexibility. Um, so depending on you know your time with the company, there might be a little more flexibility, but you know he expects people to work 40 hours a week, he expects you to be on time. If you can't do that, he says, sorry, but you're out. Um, next question, I guess I asked was, uh, how does he enforce his morals on a daily basis? And he says, you can't enforce anything. Like you can do set the example. And he just kind of touched on this with everything he said after. He was like, you know, you show up, you work hard, you set that example, people are gonna come in, they're gonna enjoy their job, they're gonna work hard for you because they like what they're doing and they wanna help you. See, they want to see the company succeed as well as yourself. Uh, then I asked him, um, what are some ethical views that he brings in on a daily stand, on a daily basis? Um, and he says that his concern more is just instincts. It's you know knowing what to do, what knowing what not to do, um, knowing how to handle different situations, which comes more of just experience. And then he also said it's not just saying, it's doing. And you know, sticking with what you believe, not you know, can't have fluff, especially when you're, you know, the head of a company. Like they look to you, they're gonna follow you, they're gonna do as you do. Next question I asked him. Um, so, have you ever let somebody go to due to some kind of ethical issue? And he says that's different for him compared to the guys in the shop. He says there's a guy who runs the shop, and he's you know had to fire people for stealing, time theft. Uh, stuff like that. Um, a story that he told me, though, it kind of pointed more on, it's like, if the people don't kind of fit with the company, 
then they don't usually last very long. He said the people that come to the company stay around. But he told me about this story about a friend of his that he hired for advertising, he came from California, um, just had a little different, you know, standpoint for, I mean, where he wanted the company to go, kind of how he did business, and actually caused another one of his loyal employees to quit. And Eric kind of had to take a tough look in the mirror and say, you know, this isn't working out. I mean, we we appreciate all that you've done, but you know, it just doesn't seem like you fit with the core of the company. So I guess just constantly having to stick with what you do. Um, and then I asked him what he thought about suing from a Christian standpoint, which he very jokingly says, I sue people all the time, I'd love to sue. And what he meant by that isn't like, he's not serious, obviously. Um, but he has said there's been a few instances where he has had to step in. For Park Tool, they have trademarked the color that is on all their tools, which is a darker blue. Um, he said that some companies will sometimes copy that, they'll put out products that are blue, and it just kind of gives off the wrong impression. Like, that's not Park Tool's product, and they don't want people to think that is. So he'll call them up, he'll say, hey, you're violating our trademark. And a lot of times he said that they're very um, apologetic, they didn't know, or, you know, they just, something went wrong, whatnot. He's very understanding about that, but he also says you have to be willing to defend your product. You have, you can't be afraid to sue, I guess, is the bottom line. And then finally I asked him, like, what are some um, decisions he's made that's maybe gone against social norms, but at the same time, like, he thought it was the right thing to do. Uh, and again, he said it just seems like common sense. Um, he, learned, he learns a lot from different businesses, but I mean, he makes decisions in his business that other companies that he's seen, they don't make. But for him, it's just something that comes naturally, and it's just something that he has to do. So my final thoughts and takeaways was, as Eric pointed out a lot, just be fair to everybody. People will come back to you when you're fair, and when that happens, it's gonna help your business grow, it's gonna help you succeed. Um, and I also said stand your ground, looking back at what he said about suing, like not being afraid to sue, um, and kind of just, again, stand your ground. Like, be willing to defend what's yours, but also um, be compassionate to a sense, I guess. And then the last thing that I took away that he really touched on, I thought, was always remain strong in your faith. He constantly talks about, you know, turning back to the scripture, turning back to faith, praying about things, and I think that's huge. Um, and that's kind of a reason why Park Tools continue to grow is because they have that strong Christian foundation at the top. So I thank you for listening to my presentation. I hope you enjoyed listening to it as much as I enjoyed conducting the